time to open Photoshop and open images within Photoshop. Step number one. Look for the open orb down in the lower left corner of your screen. Click on all programs. Look for, you might have to scroll through, look for the folder Adobe Master Collection CS6. You click that and you will see a lot of programs open. We have uh, quite a variety of the CS6 programs here and we'll spend time with uh, several of these, certainly not all of them, but there's a lot that can be done here. But we're going to begin with Photoshop. So take a look and select Adobe Photoshop CS 64-bit. That's the program we will use to edit images. So for those of you not real familiar with Photoshop, the main menu is across the top, File, Edit, Image, Layer, and so forth. And you can access just about every command there is right through there. There are some other shortcuts that you can use, but for now, we're going to spend our time with File. And then also we're going to use uh, the Crop Tool today, which is located right there. And notice that when you hover over that for a couple seconds, it'll come up and tell you what it is. And also note the shortcut letter C. C on your keyboard will take you right to the Crop Tool. And then later on, we'll spend time with some of the other, some of the other features. So to open an image, step number one, click on File. Click Open. Navigate to your Thawed Space. And then while in the open window, notice that you have some options as far as how you view the contents of that folder. So right now I'm on large icons. You could just simply have a list. You could have small icons, medium. You can go ahead and go to extra large if you want to get a better view of that. And you can also open that window up to show more. And then you can use your mouse wheel to scroll through. So for this first lesson, let's go through and find one from the class. An image something like, let's pick, let's see here. Let's take Gabby. So select it and click Open. And so what we are going to do is we're going to crop this image. We're going to come through here and remove part of it so that we can improve the composition. So at this point we're going to take a short break and talk about composition and something called the Rule of Thirds. So I did a Google search for images using the Rule of Thirds. And we're working with what we call landscape images. Imagine a piece of paper turned sideways. And you can see in these images here, that's what we have. So we've got rectangles, what we call landscape images, that have been divided into thirds. So we have a, a top third, middle third, and a bottom third, or a left third, middle third, right third. And so with the rule of thirds, the goal is to place the most important subject matter within one of those thirds, uh, which creates the effect of being the most visually appealing. So you'll take a look here, and the subject here is uh, looks like a note in a bottle. And notice that the subject, the bottle, is over on the right third. Also notice that the horizon is in the top third. Take a look at this example. Here we have some type of a landscape. It looks like mono lake here. And so you've got a subject to some interesting geologic formations over on the right third. And then once again, the horizon in the top third. Here's a beach scene. It looks like some type of a dock or a building. And it's in the upper right third. And again, the horizon in the top third, not in the middle. It's in the upper right third. Uh, here's, a, here's the land ending in the, oh, here we go, right here, in the lower third. With the subject matter the tree on the right third, and then some other interesting features over in the left third here. Here's a sailboat up in the left, left third, the horizon in the upper right third. So you can see how this rule of composition is applied. Here's a puffin. It's a bird. 
over in the right third. And the other thing to keep in mind too is notice that the bird is looking right to left and you want the subject matter in situations like this to be looking across the image. You would not want to put this puffin over in the left third and just kind of looking into nothingness. Same thing here. The biker is facing right to left and so you, you want to get some idea of what the subject matter in the picture, in this case a person on a bike, is looking at what they're seeing. Again, here's the same concept here. Child in the right third and walking across the screen. You would not want to redo this and put the child over in this left third here and then just appear to be walking to the edge of the edge of the document. So that's how you utilize the rule of thirds. Once again, here's a chair, left third. Let's see, uh, here's the horizon in the bottom third right here. And so it is a way just to create visually appealing images. And you can take this idea when you're taking your own pictures using your smartphone is just be thinking about it when you're framing people up and be thinking about these thirds and composing your pictures, taking advantage of this, and you will see your pictures improve. So what does that mean for Photoshop? Well, let's take a look. Let's get back to Photoshop and what we're going to do with Gabby here. So I'm going to use this rule of thirds, and the first step I'm going to do is click on the crop tool, and then I'm going to begin to draw out a new version of this image, and then you will see the rule of thirds pop up as soon as I release this. I'm going to draw out a rectangle. We want to avoid squares. We like rectangles. Always be thinking of that sideways pieces of, piece of paper. So there's our rule of thirds. It gives me a guide. And I want to try to get Gabby, who is our subject matter, about right in this area right here to use the rule of thirds. So I can move these handles like so. And that is looking pretty good. I think I'll stretch this out just a little bit. And so there we go. Now I've put her in that left third and pretty much centered her face around that top left third there. Now if I like that image, I will click the checkbox and accept it. And then I will click File, Save As. And this time I will go to my cropped images and save this image as Gabby. And you could, if you want, put Crop 1 and click Save. And then click OK to accept those JPEG options. Now, let's bring that up again. Bring Gabby back up. Crop Tool, this time I push the letter C. And draw it out. And let's say I do something like that. And I go, oh, that's a square. We don't want squares. So if I want to start over, I, I can start over by not accepting that change, the not sign. Cancel the current crop, and then I can start all over. And draw it out again. So what I would like for you to do is practice drawing these out. If you don't get it quite the way you want, go ahead and try again. And then have me come by and take a look at it and see what I think. The one last thing I will show you is that you can also make adjustments by actually clicking on the image and move the image within your cropped frame. So that's the other way to do it. So you have handles or you can actually move the image. Accept the change, not accept the change, start over again. So your assignment is to practice with a lot of the images that we have. It's okay to make mistakes. We are practicing using the rule of thirds to crop landscape images. Later on, we'll take a look at the portrait images.